As a chemistry and science student in general, it is very important for you to follow a correct agenda. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today, I will show you how to do a correct titration using Burek, Volumetric Pipet, and Conical Flask. So I hope you can enjoy this video and learn something from it. Titration is an excellent way to determine a concentration of a solution. I have seen many of high school students perform titration using Burek, but many of them don't do it correctly. As a chemistry and science student in general, it is very important for you to follow the correct procedure in an experiment to ensure accurate results. Remember, accuracy is very very much needed in chemistry experiment. Today, we will do a simple titration between sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid using a PP indicator. PP indicator is colorless in acid but turns pink in alkaline solution. At the end of this video, you will also help me to determine which set of data results is accurate and which one is not. So, let's have fun! Wear your lab coat, your gloves, and your safety goggles. We have to always rinse our burette before we do our experiment. Why? Because there might be a little bit of impurities present in the inside wall of the burette from previous experiment and it will alter our results. For example, if this burette was cleaned and rinsed with water but it hasn't dried completely when we use it, then the process of that water will dilute whatever solution we're going to put inside. When dilution happens, whether it is on purpose or it isn't, the concentration of the solution will change. And your data results will be inaccurate. It is important to get used with adjusting your burat position by turning the clamps, as this will give you more flexibility in working with the burat. Make sure you know how it works. Make sure that the top is in close position. Put the funnel on top of the burette. Add around 5 until 10 cm cube of the solution we are going to use. Then, while holding burette horizontally and carefully, keeping the top end of the burette at a waist beaker, Rotate the burette. Then, run around half of the titrant through the bottom tap to clean the tip. Then pour the rest through the top opening to the waste beaker. And this is what we call rinsing. You can repeat this process one more time to ensure that it has been thoroughly rinsed and it has only our solution inside. Now we are ready for titration. We will put sodium hydroxide solution into the burette to 0.0, .0 mark. We do this by carefully fill it up until the solution passes 0.0, .0 mark a little bit. Then, we turn the stopcock very slowly to let it drain until we reach 0.0, .0 mark. After that, we will obtain 25 cm3 of hydrochloric acid using volumetric pipette, add a few drops of indicator, then we will perform titration until the first permanent pink color appears. Make sure that the tap is in close position. Remember, when you measure anything with chemistry apparatus, Eye level is crucial to avoid error in reading. Position your burette and fill it up using the help of a funnel. It is equally important to check whether you have air bubbles trapped in the tap area. If you do have air bubbles, remove them from the tip of the burette by draining several milliliters of the titron rapidly into the waste beaker. White tile under the burette will help you observe color change better. Volumetric pipette also needs rinsing before use. We do this by filling it up with the solution we will use, then we drain it to the waste beaker. 
obtain 25 centimeter cube of hydrochloric acid using volumetric pipette and place it in a clean conical flask. Touch the wall of the flask with the tip of the pipette to fully dispense the solution. Add a few drops of PP indicator to the flask, give it a swirl, then you are ready to titrate. Notice how I position my left fingers to the stopcock. This gives me better control to the flow of the draining from the burette. Perform the titration carefully while swirling the flask until you see the first permanent pink color appears. Close the tap completely, then read the volume. Remember, the bottom of the meniscus. When you record your data, it is recommended to do it in a neat table like this. You must record the initial burette reading, the final burette reading, and the volume of the solution you have added from the experiment. You will repeat this experiment as many as needed using the same procedure and add the result to your recording table. If you have to use the same conical flask, always rinse the flask with distilled water before you start. You don't have to always start from 0.0, .0 mark in the burette. I started from 1.9 and proceed with the same procedure. For higher grade chemistry student, an even more accurate titration is usually required. Let me show you how it goes. The rinsing is pretty much the same for every grade level, but for a more accurate titration, we will start with rough titration. Rough titration will be carried out quickly to get a rough idea of the approximate volume to reach the endpoint. Hence, the result will not be included in the accurate titration. I do this by quickly drain each centimeter cube of the solution until the pink color appears. The value will be too big since it is unlikely to have been stopped exactly at the end point. The reading is rough tighter and is not used to calculate the average. The volume is read to the nearest 0.05 or 2 decimal point. This reading is 17.70 cm3. Now that we have our approximate value, we can proceed with the accurate titration. We can just drain the solution from the burette until about 2 or 3 cm3 from the approximate value, then add dropwise until end point. You can repeat your accurate titration as many as needed, but the result is considered reliable if concordant data is obtained. Tighter values are said to be concordant if they are within 0 0.10 of each other. Now it is time for comprehension. Enjoy something. Enjoy something. We all enjoy something. <laughs>